Crisis Remaster includes software ray tracing, Devil May Cry 5 Special Edition might not be coming to PC, and Warzone is coming to mobile. Hello everybody and welcome to a new episode of Top Gaming News. My name is Gibbon Madness and before you go ahead, press that like button, click on subscribe if you haven't already and let's just jump right into some interesting news. Crisis Remaster has now released and it's available in Epic Store and this game actually looks a hell lot more better than how originally it looks like. In other words, it's a good remaster. Now this game at launch is going to support software as well as hardware ray tracing. They have added so many new things to have an improvement in the visual aspects of the game such as adding a software global illumination to the game. Now this produces a scene from a natural light point of view. The engine that this game is running on is able to have that reflection on the nano suit itself. The biggest thing is addition of software ray tracing, where the project lead of Crisis Remastered said that a good thing about software ray tracing is that any graphics card can run it, whether it's Nvidia or AMD. And you can also play this game in 5 to 6 years old graphics card which is absolutely incredible. Something that wasn't possible back in the day when Crisis was launched because in that time, it was hella impossible to play Crisis at the highest settings. But that doesn't mean that Crisis Remastered is playable in the highest graphics settings because there is a new highest graphics settings called Can You Run Crisis Mode. And in this mode, there is no such graphics card which is able to have the gameplay at 30 FPS. That is incredible. But RTX 3080 on the other hand, might be able to cross that 30 FPS and make it playable. When the first trailer of Crisis Remastered was shown, it received a lot of criticism. For a lot of people, the game looked horrible in the first one. For other people, the textures were not the best. And there were many other reasons why they did not want to play this version of Crisis Remastered. Ever since that, Crisis actually took upon themselves to make sure that the remaster looks actually better and people play it. And now it looks like people are having a better opinion on how this Crisis Remastered looks like. A lot of you guys received a key for Crisis Remastered and if you guys did, let me know in the comments below what you think about the gameplay, how does it feel to play this game and for those of you guys who did not get the key, you can buy this game in Epic Store. I know it is Epic Store exclusive but it's still not a bad deal to go for. Beyond Good and Evil creator Michael Ansel officially quits working for the gaming industry and is now pursuing his other interest that is wildlife. On Instagram, Michael announced that he's gonna leave the gaming industry and he's gonna go pursue his wildlife interest. Michael Ansel is the creator of Beyond Good and Evil and he was also working on the sequel of Beyond Good and Evil 2 for a very long time. And he's leaving the gaming industry. But he did say that Beyond Good and Evil 2 development is still going strong and you might see something next year. It's definitely sad to see that Beyond Good and Evil creator is actually leaving the gaming industry altogether. But when interests change, you gotta go by what your interests say. Speaking of Beyond Good and Evil 2, senior producer Brunner has said that Ansel was not involved in the development of Beyond Good and Evil 2 for a while now and the development team is hard at work to make sure that we build the world the same way that we showed you in the tech demo. He also said that they have passed an important milestone delivering a build that proves their space pirate fantasy and offers hours of gameplay with an incredible level of freedom. The development team has also increased in size because Ubisoft Paris is also added to the team as a partner studio. And Brunner told that they might show something for Beyond Good and Evil 2 in 2021. Ooh, this is definitely taking a long time. To be honest, it's not a bad thing that they're working on a game for this long because they want to make sure that they make a game the way they want it to. They don't want to disappoint any fans and that's perfectly fine. It's better to release a full made game with everything that you imagined rather than having a half built game and release it. <coughs> Battlefield. <coughs> Even though Ansel is gone, the team is still pushing forward to continue with Beyond Good and Evil 2 and the last tech demo we saw, the open world felt really really huge and I hope that they are making something like that. And maybe next year, who knows, you might get a glimpse of Beyond Good and Evil 2 as well as get a release date. What do you guys think about Beyond Good and Evil 2? Let me know in the comments below. Last week we also saw PlayStation 5 event where we got to see some really cool games and one of them I am really excited about but we didn't get to see much was Harry Potter RPG game named Hogwarts Legacy where apparently you take a character and learn magic tricks in Hogwarts and then go out to the outer worlds and face the real demons. Of course there's no Harry Potter in this game but you know still you can, you can be like one if you want to. We also saw a new gameplay for Spider-Man, Miles Morales and Man O' Man. This game feels so good. There was slow motion during combat and the overall combat feels so much more special somehow. And yes, the game looks 
beautiful. Miles Morales starts a year after the first game's event, and not only that, Spider-Man Miles Morales is also coming to PlayStation 4. I'm so happy about that. And if you own PlayStation 5 and you own Marvel's Spider-Man Miles Morales in there, then you can get a free copy of the game in PlayStation 5. There's also Marvel's Spider-Man Remaster coming to PlayStation 5, but I don't know if the original owners of Marvel's Spider-Man who own the game in PS4 will be able to get a free upgrade in PlayStation 5 for the remastered version which I don't think so you will. We also had a new trailer for Final Fantasy 16, although there is nothing known of when the game is going to be released, but the producer Yoshida says that next year we will get a big reveal. And also this game is coming to PC. Devil May Cry 5 is coming with a special edition and is exclusive to console and is not going to come to PC. The reason why is they are making this special edition only to benefit the architecture of PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X and they have no plans whatsoever for PC. Even though PC can handle that same level of performance but still no plans for PC. So what happens when you have a special edition of a game coming out in consoles but not in PC? Well people go in Steam and review bomb the game, exactly because they are now going to Steam and giving negative reviews to DMC5 which is terrible in my opinion because this game is really cool man, why do you have to go ahead and give negative reviews? And the biggest announcement of them all which was rumored for a long time, a new God of War. I am so happy that I literally started jumping off this chair. God of War Ragnarok is not only coming but it's releasing in 2021 and that's really quick. In this game, Kratos will be fighting more gods including Thor who we saw by the end of God of War. So exciting. There was another new trailer for Resident Evil 8 Village which looks a little bit different than how Resident Evil usually looks like because there's werewolves and weird type of storytellings. So this was a short recap of what happened last week with PlayStation event. We also saw the price reveals for PlayStation 5. The PlayStation 5 digital version is going to be $399 and disc version is going to be $499. Although we don't know the price in India which to be honest it's not going to be the same conversion price. Of course the price is going to go up around forty to 45000 for the digital version and maybe fifty to 55000 for disc version. Who knows? We still have to wait and see. So after this event, are you tempted to buy a PlayStation 5? Because I got tempted to buy PlayStation 5 but unfortunately I bought my PlayStation 4 this very year. So I don't think so I'll be buying PlayStation 5 this year, maybe next year. Call of Duty already has a mobile version that a lot of people play. After PUBG got banned, many people either switched to Call of Duty or Free Fire. To be honest, Call of Duty Mobile doesn't look that bad. It has a multiplayer mode as well where you have maps from Black Ops and the classic Modern Warfare games. It looks pretty cool. But now it looks like Call of Duty wants to bring something more and that is Warzone to mobile. There is a new job listing in the game which is searching for features of executive producer for a new mobile game in the series referred as WZM which is probably a code name for Warzone Mobile. It does mention a new AAA mobile FPS game in COD franchise so it most definitely could be Warzone but that's not it because it also includes things about Warzone. It says to harvest, adapt and deliver essential features from Warzone console and PC version into mobile and improving Warzone by proposing and producing mobile specific additions and changes to feature to ensure a best in class mobile experience. Well that states it all, it is coming to mobile. Now the reason why they're doing that is because Warzone is the biggest hit of Call of Duty and of course they want to expand it to mobile gamers because they know that mobile gamers are increasing day after day. So they see this as a great investment. This is quite interesting but I'm actually worried how will you fit 200 GB size game in your mobile? Hmm. Nonetheless, what do you think about Warzone Mobile being a thing? Will you guys be trying that game out when it comes to mobile? It would be really interesting to let my friends know that hey Warzone is coming out and they will start playing the game. Not bad Call of Duty, not bad. There has been some game leaks around and one of them is Mass Effect Trilogy Remaster. That's right, this game has been leaked in Portuguese retailer website which states that the game is coming to Nintendo Switch. This rumor has been going on for a long time that Mass Effect Trilogy Remaster is coming to all platforms. Some places we get to see a PC version, some places we get to see a PlayStation 4 version and now we are getting to see a Nintendo Switch version. So we don't know what's gonna happen because rumors are increasing day after day and it's EA. So EA will decide whether they're gonna release it or not. Another leak also came around and that is of NFS Hot Pursuit Remastered which was rated in Korea for PlayStation 4. Goodness, we have a lot of remasters coming for different games. 
It's interesting that they went with Hot Pursuit Remaster, if they're going for a remaster. Well, the reason why is because they have given the rights of the new game to Criterion. And Criterion also made Hot Pursuit. So the only game they have the rights to is Hot Pursuit. And that's why we're not getting remasters of game like Most Wanted, which is even more popular than Hot Pursuit. Speaking of Most Wanted, apparently Most Wanted 2 was supposed to happen. An original sequel of the game, which was cancelled by EA. There is a new YouTube video which shows the demo that was used internally as a concept for Most Wanted 2. But then it was denied by EA because nowadays we see NFS with more live service than single player storyline and EA at that time had a different thing in mind and that's why they scrapped the whole thing. I mean it is a demo and it's nowhere finished but you can see it looks more like Most Wanted and it also feels like it's a mod on Most Wanted. A lot of people did modding back then as well but they mod uh, most wanted to have a much better graphical look of the game but it looks so good and it sucks that they had to scrap this whole project EA had other plans and they were going in some other direction so what do you think of all of this the remaster of Mass Effect Trilogy and the remaster of Hot Pursuit both being the EA games which are not being announced only we are getting all the rumors so maybe it might be possible that they're coming out it might not be possible that they're coming out but if it does come which one would you play well, that is all there is to talk about in this episode of Top Gaming News. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Let me know in the comments below what do you think about any of the news we just discussed up above. And also make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to Gamer Connect, and also enable notification bell icon so that you get to know what more videos are coming up next. My name is Gimin Manis and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.